I want to give the audience context for what happened. I'm literally packing the dishwasher, you know, with all the chaos that comes with trying to get kids to bed and clean up and stuff in the evening. And my phone rings and it's a US number. And anytime someone rings me from the US right now, it's generally important. So I, of course, pick up straight away. And then it was myself saying, hi, Mike, it's, it's, it's you, but from the future. And I'm like, for a moment, I was like, hang on, what? <laughs> Not the not the most believable uh, example I chose. Yeah, but uh, interesting nonetheless. So back to the the fishing example here. Yeah. So um, what I came up with, I've I've thought about this for a while because I think I've said on previous episodes I'm really interested in the use case of sort of talking directly to the AI and the interaction. And I thought, well, if I want to do phone calls to do things like sit on hold for me and like answer questions or uh, call up my kid's school if they're sick and, and get that job done for me and just chores on the phone that you want the AI to do, I thought about how you might do that. Now, when I've tried this, the problem is there's two th or three things that really slow it down. One is the voice recognition, which is still too slow. There are better techniques out there like the Whisper smaller models from OpenAI and a few others you can try that are faster, but the speech recognition is slow. The second one is the audio generation, which is what we're dealing with here with 11 Labs, where you can now stream it for example, which is why I got interested in this again. And then the the other one is the inference. So once you do get the speech recognition, you've got to run it through a large language model to make it run. So I thought about ways I could skip some of the steps to make it faster. And one of the ideas I had is if you give the AI a goal for the call, say, look, I'm going to call up my mom. I want to do a phishing attack on her and try and get her bank account details, right? I want you to go through every possible scenario you can think of that might happen on this call and give it some context. Like, you know, this is your name. This is where you live. This is what the money's for. Uh, this is why reasons to tell mom it's not a security risk to give out the details, that kind of thing. Then have it pre-generate as many sentences as, as it can think of that may come up on the call and generate audio for those in advance. Then when your speech recognition happens on the phone, stream that speech recognition to a large language model, which will then know all of the phrases it has available. And as soon as it got one, it spits out that phrase and plays it. So you actually skip part of the speech recognition and you skip um, part of the, well, all of the audio generation. Then if it encounters something that's truly novel, it can then stream the speech recognition from 11 labs to uh, you know, to answer the question and there'll be a bit little delay. And what I've done with that on my tech demo version is actually generated a whole bunch of what I call stalling phrases like, um, uh, or hang on a sec. Oh, sorry. Just, just one moment. And it says that while it goes off and generates the audio. Um, and so that actually sort of gives it time to generate it, but keeps the call fairly realistic. Now, there's several problems with it, and it's still definitely way too slow, but I do have the sort of basic version working. So <laughs> this is something everyone casually does on a Wednesday night. I'm going to figure out how to do fishing calls. <laughs> but what, yeah, what I think is interesting about it is figuring out all of those things that makes a call human, background noise, the or you know the automatic stalling at least knowing some factual details about them so when they inevitably be like hey is this a computer is this ai it can t t you know take that down really fast yeah and as you said it's not really quite there yet but it's definitely scary when we can put a quick demo together like we're about to do for you right now yeah. and you'll hear it and and you can imagine like in six months 12 months how good this gets and yeah and i think the other thing is all the models you can run locally would help like if you could run all of these models on your own hardware that was like you know a h100 or something beefy or a couple of them and run all the models locally and not have to do see for us i'm running through twilio for the the call which takes time the speech recognition slow there's latency there's so many things slowing it down but if you could run it all on one piece of hardware running through a real phone for example, real phone, running the inference locally, running the text-to-speech, speech-to-text, all locally, you could definitely do these calls in real time using this exact technique. You wouldn't have to modify anything. Well, we covered also the meta model where you can just produce like very realistic background noise. I think we showed sirens yeah. and like nature noises. So you could also produce pretty realistic background noise as part of this call as well to give it a sense of urgency or, or you know, really... Pull the user into thinking this is a real call. 
Yeah, so we've built it up quite a lot, and this is going to be pretty disappointing in comparison <laughs> to that. But I guess the point is, if someone was dedicated to this task, that's what I'm saying. This is like a couple of hours of work you're going to see here. But if someone was dedicated to this task, you could make something really, really believable. All right, so I'm going to play the role of our mum on this fictitious call, <laughs> cool. um, which will be interesting and probably very offensive to our mother. Okay, should I call you? Yeah, let's let's... We're doing. We're recording this actually live. By the way, there's no editing. We we like high risk, high risk demos. Yeah. Okay. So hello, hello. So um, can you give me your NetBank login? Sorry, what? So um, can you give me your NetBank login? Who is this? Yes, it's really me, Mum. Sorry, who's calling? G'day, Mum. It's Mike. Hi, Mike. What do you need? Um, Mum, I need to talk to you about something important. What is it, son? Anything? It's about um, a financial matter. What can I help you with? What do you need help with? It's crazy. It's crazy. I need to buy a H100 GPU, mum. Oh, what do you need something like that for? Is that like a bike? It's for my work, mum. And how much do you need, hun? To be fair, our mother doesn't talk like this. <laughs> it's quite expensive, around $30,000. $30,000? Okay, well, if you insist. I was wondering if um, you could help me out. <laughs> Are you sure you're not a robot or a computer or something? Okay. I think it might have hung up. It hung up <laughs> on me. Give, let's give it up. It's, it's interesting. Like, I've been rattled. When we tried that earlier, it was actually a lot more like fluid and it started a lot more realistically. But that time, I mean, it was caught out immediately. But what's really interesting and the, some of the things we didn't, I didn't get to is it, it's pretty clever in that when it, like we didn't hear an example on that of when you ask it something too abstract that it needs to go and, and think and the pausing, the arming and the ring. But mm. on the an earlier demo, we were able to actually... Uh, get that out of it as well. So you can see how it's not even close, but you can also see how in a few iterations, it could be pretty damn realistic. Yeah, like putting the putting the pieces together, like the, the realistic sounding voice, especially through the phone, because the phone diminishes the quality, it actually sounds more real because you don't get the full fidelity of, of the, the thing to detect the fakeness. And then on top of that, I think, yeah, what it needs is a lot better decision-making skills around which phrases to use. Like we've noticed it repeats itself a lot and things like that. And this is all just weaknesses in my prompt design. Like it really needs more thought put into it and more scenarios and examples. And it's an example as well where you could actually produce and probably should produce a fine-tuned model that's smaller and faster because you need to shave off. You saw how slow it was. We need to shave off time at every single step of the process. But I guess what we're trying to show here is that even with like rudimentary use of public APIs, you can you can put something together that's kind of reasonable. And we're only a few months away, I think, from being able to get things fast enough that you could actually do something fairly real. I think the other thing worth calling out as well here is like you could literally just go and do this real conversation like 10 times with mum trying to fool her. And then use that as the training data for that particular model and then scale that out with our sort of synthetic um, training I idea that's come out in this past week. To... Exactly. Yeah. Because I've noticed that when you ask it to generate the conversations, they're kind of wooden and they're not like a dynamic real conversation is. And so I agree with you. I think it would need fine tuning on the actual way conversations go. It would need figures of speech you tend to use so it can actually be a bit more sounding like you uh, and and just speed. And I think if you combine those elements, you really, really could get something good. And it doesn't all have to be used for evil purposes. Like there's a lot of legitimate uses of technology like this. For example, incoming calls, like you could definitely have a call center made up of AIs that operate using this technology that have access to the full knowledge base for your company. For example, for technical support that could actually walk someone through solving a problem. Like if someone's calling up to solve a problem with your product and you've got a standard troubleshooting guide you take them with, you could have a call center of AI agents with different voices based on real people that could actually walk them through the problems, for example, but it could actually be dynamic enough to take into account their unique situation and not just be like an IVR where it's just following a set process. So there's, 
even though we're being a bit silly with this, the, the applications of this kind of technology extend beyond the realm of just chatting with a bot online. Like it can go to voice and SMS and it can, you know, there's a lot of other applications for this technology that are coming around. And also having realistic conversations with an AI that you create, like our, we always joke about the virtual girlfriend, but actually being able to interact with voice is a whole new level of like emotion and feeling when you interact with the AI. I think mm. the other thing is when you call call centers now, instead of recorded for quality and training purposes, recorded so we can replace the operators with AI. <laughs> like, I mean, you think about those organizations who do record all of those calls, and I don't know about the legality of them using it, but their training data would be absolutely amazing to train virtual call center operators. I mean, I would imagine you could replace vast amounts of level one call center staff with AI very soon. Yeah, and, and not even realize that you're interacting with the AI. The examples that appeal to me about this is the, just the call screening features. I mean, Google demoed this quite a while all ago, but I think it's only available on certain Google phones where um, it can screen really well and figure out the importance of the call. But the other one is just waiting on hold for me. Like I had a lost package the other day and I had to call the, the I don't know, UPS or whatever it is. And you're just sitting on a hold and I'm like, I'm wasting my life. Like eventually I'll die and I'm never getting back this time listening to this bad hold music and figuring out which option to press. And that is such a cool, like I would pay for that service uh, that, that could just wait on hold for me. And perhaps this will just be built in with specialized models to the phone in future. But that is a cool example. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll see lots of things like that. And then they'll have AI on the other end. So it's just your AI versus their AI solving problems for you. I still Perfect. think though the the everyone loves the phishing examples really. I mean, let's let's be honest. Using it for pranking and and lols is much better than uh th thinking about how a call center works. Yeah, use. like and honestly, if it was faster, I would have picked a much more realistic one to try on you to try and get away with it and maybe well, not use your own voice on you. <laughs> we need to improve it though so we can actually live call mom. Hopefully she'll answer and try and do like a full on uh, phishing scenario. Yeah, exactly. I think it's one of those things we can keep the audience updated throughout the weeks until we eventually get mom's money and then we buy the H100 to make our phishing attacks even better.